Live long like he would. Big smiles, big heart, big service, all love. Officer Sean Collier, we love you. The Institute convened a committee to think about a memorial for Sean Collier. The figure of the memorial as a kind of five-walled structure is extruded, and then a void is actually carved out of it. And that void represents a kind of absence or a loss. The form itself is based on the hand, representing both a kind of gesture of openness to others, but also the ability to apply oneself to make things better. We wanted the stone to be representative of the places where Sean spent a lot of time with like the MIT community. He was very active with the MIT Outing Club. So, you know, we started thinking about like, you know, granite, New Hampshire. The memorial is made of 32 blocks, which piece together in a way that allows each block to hold the other one up. I'll go around and get the other two. So its strength comes from unity. Its strength comes from the many, as opposed to a kind of singular gesture. So here it's 90 and a half, and here it's 91 and a half. People don't build anymore this way. So it's an experiment in using really sort of old-fashioned techniques of stone masonry, uh, sort of pre-modern almost, if you will, but using um, high-end computers to sort of determine uh, the shape and the layout of the stones. I'm saying 116. So we're saying this is A1. It's great, it fits perfectly. The five walls actually extend out from the center void. And as they extend out, they frame very specific views. The two walls that are closest together align with the location of Sean's cruiser where he was shot. Uh, it's the most intimate space in the memorial. When you're under, it frames exactly that spot where the tragedy occurred. What we really have are five half arches, which are each leaning in toward the middle. And while that half arch should fall over, there's another half arch somewhere else leaning in, and another half arch and another half arch. So each of these are coming together and balancing perfectly in the middle. So the arch is exerting an outward force, and the walls, the five radiating walls, are buttressing the central part of a very flat vault. As those arches push outward on the walls, the walls want to spread apart. And so buried underground, there's a tension tie which is pulling back toward the center and which is pulling the whole memorial together so it's an equilibrium. Below ground, there's a grade beam, which is poured in concrete, and it's reinforced concrete, so there's steel embedded within the concrete, which carries the tensile forces to ensure that the walls will not move outward over the centuries. The outside of this sculpture is all going to be a flamed finish. This is a very fine grain, very dense granite, and leaves still a fairly flat, but a more natural textured surface. Each stone is cut with advanced milling technology. Some of the stones are cut by robots. And the accuracy of each stone is within about one millimeter. Even as the robot is carving the blocks, someone has to come in and tap every single piece and break it off kind of one by one before then the robot can come in for its final pass. It was a kind of incredible dance between like machine and man to carve these pieces. It's like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle with finely polished blocks of granite, but in this case they weigh about 10,000 pounds each.
My name's Rob Rogers. I'm a project manager with Suffolk Construction. Uh, I'm also Sean Collier's brother. There's a sequence on how we're gonna lower the stones. So in theory, the stone should lock in place. When the first blocks arrive and start to take physical form, as an architect, that's a magical moment when a concept turns into physical reality. There were many times in this whole project where you know, we had to keep our emotions in check because um, it was such an emotional project for, for everyone involved. It's been uh, very humbling and healing, you know, in, in the past almost two years since Sean was gone, so it's really helped a lot. We started with the keystone, and we had to build a temporary scaffold under that keystone. Then the ring stones that surround the keystone came in next, and we sequentially went through each of the five legs. This has probably been the hardest season to build in. Well, we have 109 inches, worst winter ever in Boston. It made things more challenging, but uh, everyone on site was great. I mean, we kind of knew, hey, we have an end date, we need to meet this date, so guys worked harder, they worked longer. The most exciting moment and the most critical moment in the construction is when we lower the scaffolding and the weight of the great keystone and the flat vault goes into the five walls, really for the first time. got it instrumented for displacements in 25 different locations, and then we've got nine scales underneath it taking load readings. So we're gonna be doing real-time measurements of how the load is being transferred. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the four middle ones. One, two, three, now half inch. As we lower the temporary supports and they come down, the load on the scales should come down. And the load on the scales will be going down because the weight of the stones will be going into arching. If we lower the supports and the reading on the scale doesn't change, that's bad. So behind B leg is a little part of my speech that I gave uh, for Sean, so they engraved it onto the stone. So live long like he would, big hearts, big smiles, big service, all love. He was just a kid that just loved being a cop, you know. He had a million friends. I don't know how he slept. He was always doing something, hanging out with somebody, you know. He really lived life so it's, you know, fullest. Shower the people you love. He was made to be a police officer, and I know his mother said he wanted to be a policeman from the time he was seven years old, and it showed. It showed in everything he did. He got it. It's a very open structure for something built out of such solid stone, and it's sort of supposed to be a gateway into campus. You know, there's people milling around. They spend a lot of time in North Court. They like to be outside. And so, you know, we have these benches, and I think there will be trees, and it will hopefully become a place that people really enjoy sitting down and spending some time with their friends and with the community. I hope the memorial will become one of the beloved elements on campus. Hopefully it can remain for us to remember Sean's service and the coming together of the community and our values. Things are gonna be much better if we only